Our senior athlete, Jake. And we welcome you inside of the Panther Den as so we get set for the Unify March Madness game on the first night of March Madness as they are honoring the senior athletes here. We'll join Mark Sutton now. Project search at SCC after graduation from high school. One more round of applause for Jacob Gilman. There's Jacob. As you see him walking away. At this time, we ask that you stand as you are able to honor our nation. Tonight's national anthem will be performed by our very own Unify athletes. Years pass. We have had Brianna Wills perform.
All right, Panther fans, you know what time it is. Panthers go lights out in five, four, three, two, one. Now, let's introduce the players and partners for tonight's team, starting with the white team. Jacob Gilman with partner Laura Holland. Davis Moffitt with partner Emma Crothers. Up next, Jackie Pittman with partner Riley Cassida. Up next, Jonathan Collier. Next for the white team, Angela Mashburn with partner Hope Smith. Up next, Nash Boyles with partner Caden Martini. Next for the white team, Dylan Ford with partner Aaron Jennings. Up next, Mary Claire Branson. Elizabeth Mashburn with Mackenzie Holland. Up next, Abby Brogdon with her partner McKinley Cochran. Next for the right team, Kyle Brackett. with partner Reed Raby. Up next, Crystal Lee. With partner Logan Gwynn. Up next, give it up for Natalie Henry. With partner Lydia Holland. Up next, Joel Rogers with partner Caden Martini. Tonight's coaches for the white team, head coach Becca Brooks, assisted by Sherry Houston, Sarah Worsick, Dana Vinson, and Kayla Schulte. That white team. It's time for the red team. Up first, Bobby Zebendon with partner Elijah Cochran. Next for the red, Emma Autry. Avery Williamson. Up next, Brittany Watson. Partner, Boston Stringer. Give it up for Jeremiah Hammond.
Cameron Hodgins. Team Joe Nolan partnered up with Rodney Van Hook. Team Caitlin Reeves partnered up with Avery Moffitt. Next for the red team, Erica Messer partnered up with Claire Hovis. The red team, Charles Bradley. Partnered up with Elijah Cochran. For the red team, head coach, Jamie Waldrop. Assisted by Laura Daly, Patty Hudig, and Rodney Van Hook. Sitting at the scores table beside myself, is my partner representing the ESPN booth. Give it up for Mr. Patrick Fates. Our referees for tonight's event, Coach Jay Brooks and Coach Josh Brooks, and our water boy and water girl, Mr. DeVille and Miss Vattel. All right, we have everybody introduced. We've got time up on the clock. We're going to tip this one off very, very shortly. Hopefully, we're still on YouTube and Facebook with all the copyrighted music that they played underneath the uh, starting lineups. But uh, it is what it is. We've got a live stream on, and hello, everybody hello, can uh, view this. On. All right, we're going to have a couple of more opening announcements before we get this one underway, it appears. I think Patrick Fates oh, yeah. is going to say something. He's coming out to midcourt. Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick Fates. And I'm part of the FHS student leadership team. At this time, I would love to invite our hype, hype squad to come here and do the Everywhere We Go chant. All right, guys.
there's a student-led chant to begin the basketball game. It's time for the tip-off. All right, we're going to get the, the tip off here now. And right as we tip it off. It's like the officials, as you saw, are uh, Jay and Josh. They're going to tip things off here. <laughs> this is always a fantastic event. There's always a lot of humor and a lot of goodwill. We're gonna kick this. We're gonna tip this thing off. As the red team will have the opening possession, bringing it down court. It's Bobby Zebedin. Couldn't get the first to go. He got the second though. And the scoring is underway. The red team is up early, two nothing. The white team now has an opportunity. It's Jacob Gilman. He's going to bring it up. Lost control of it. And they're going to be picked up by his teammate, Dylan Ford. Ford lifts the shot off the glass. And good. We're tied at two apiece at the fifth annual Unify a March Madness game in the paint. Matthew Jenkins lifts a shot, just hit the front of the iron. Offensive rebound. Zebedin couldn't get the second shot to go, got his own rebound. He's going to give it up, though. Going to kick it out. It's Caitlin Reeves in the paint. Caitlin dribbles, gets position, shoots. Nothing but net. Down court. It's Mashburn, lost control of it, did Mashburn, and it's headed out of bounds. They'll reset. Mashburn up top, that free throw line. She thought about it. Now going to dribble, look to get position. Dribbles back out. Mashburn. Mashburn, what does she want to do? She's going to back it back out. Still trying to get that perfect shot. Then gets her pocket pick, but gets it right back. Oh, no, another steal. Bobby Zebedin down court. He couldn't get it to go. Got his own rebound, though, and got the second shot to go. Bringing it down, it's Charles Bradley for the white team. He's going to give it up to Joe Nolan. Nolan in the paint. He couldn't get it to go. And the red team comes down with a rebound. Zebedin couldn't get the shot to go. The red team, though, they have been crashing the boards. They'll get another opportunity. From the free throw line, in and out. Another offensive rebound and the stick back. Matthew Jenkins with the buckets. But a high scoring first quarter. Mashburn with it. He's going to back it out. Free throw line. Mashburn gets position. Shoots in and out. It goes at a defensive rebound. It's going to be slapped away. White team able to get it back. And the bucket up and good for the white team. Joe Nolan able to get that one to go. And he cuts that red team lead to just four at 8-4. Red team now, opportunity once again inside the arc. Now inside the paint. Shot wouldn't go from about the free throw line. Another offensive rebound. That one's off the mark. Another offensive rebound, a stick back. Again, wouldn't go. Matthew Jenkins couldn't get it. What do you know? It's the red team grabbing another rebound. 
They'll kick it out. Free throw line. Now dribbling in. Shot up and good. Caitlin Reeves able to get the bucket. And four minutes has elapsed in the first quarter, and we'll have a break now at the four-minute mark. You want to do some, Patrick? We'll have a water break for both teams now. So I believe Patrick Fayette is going to entertain us here at the ESPN table. Both teams reset here. A high scoring first quarter. 10 to 4. Now we're back to action. Okay. Natalie Henry couldn't get it to go. Long rebound going to be secured by the red team. It's Bobby Zebedin again. He's going to stop Pop from three. Got his own rebound, though. Goes back up with a shot. It wouldn't go. Another rebound. For, well, that was Sammy Kama, rather, that attempted those shots. He got a couple of rebounds and couldn't get the bucket to go. Another offensive rebound. It's Caitlin Reeves. And she couldn't get it to go. Check that. That's uh, Krista Irvin in the paint. Irvin's first shot would not go. Got another opportunity. Got the crowd behind her. And what do you know, another offensive rebound. The red team just crashing the boards here in this first quarter. They got it slapped away. So the white team now got to bring it down court and try to get something going offensively, trailing by six. Underneath the pass goes. Henry's shot wouldn't go. The white team grabs the rebound. Angela Mashburn and off the glass. So we're down to two minutes and 25 seconds. And coming up between the first and second quarters, we're going to have a hobby horse race. And then at the half, we're going to stick around for that because we're going to have the students versus the teachers basketball game. Shot in the paint would not go, but the red team able to get a, a rebound. And now the white team comes down with it. Natalie Henry. Natalie Henry dribbles, shoots, and got the roll. We'll see if the red team can answer. to Irvin with the buckets. Brings the crowd to their feet. Mashburn brings it down. Mashburn in the paint. Mashburn off the glass. I'll tell you what, early on in this first quarter, it's been an offensive explosion for both teams. 12-10 now, just a two-point lead for the red team. They've got the basketball under 60 seconds left. Another opportunity in the paint wouldn't go for the red team. Now a long rebound. Up and good in the paint. Well, Kyle Brackett. Kyle Brackett able to get the bucket. It's the red team's opportunity now. Sammy Kama with 26 seconds left. Lifts a deep three. That one would not go. And the white team grabs the rebound. So we got... 20 seconds left. We'll see what the white team can do here. Kyle Brackett again. Opportunity. Couldn't get it to go. 
Rammed out down to 10 seconds. And Sammy Kama brings it down court. Lifts another shot. That one had a bead, but could not make the bottom of the net. Kama with another opportunity. Kama shoots. He got it. So that's going to do it for the first quarter. Here in the fifth annual Unify basketball game, 14-12. The uh, red team has just a two-point lead on the white team. All right, we're going to get this hobby horse race going here. But uh, before we do get everything situated here, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are set up with the hobby horse races. Everybody is raring to go. I think they're going to be playing some copyrighted music there, so I will not bring that up. Well, I thought they were just about ready for the hobby horse race, but evidently they're still getting situated here. We're glad that you joined us for the Fifth annual Unify March Madness ball game. The madness is going on right now, by the way. I haven't checked the scores lately. Involved in this. Still getting the uh, hobby horse races all set up. And this should be entertaining. As I mentioned a while ago, the halftime entertainment is teacher versus student basketball game, which I've already been told by some uh, teachers that they've got the AFib ready for the teachers out here. <laughs> Clear. I've already made those jokes. Heart attack special. All right. Looks like they're ready to go now. We'll send it down. From that electrifying half. First quarter, let's settle up for some entertainment. I'm Kaylee Zachary, and I'm a part of the student leadership team, bringing you a dash of fun and frenzy today. This is the Happy Horse Relay Race, an idea that was brought to us by our very own Patrick Fates. Thank you, Patrick. So imagine this, two teams of four FHS track athletes lining up for a challenge like no other. At the sound of go, the first athlete from each team will leap into action, armed with nothing but their wits and a trusty horse and a stylish hat. The first court in front of them is designed to test their agility, balance, and teamwork skills. First up, the hula hoop hop, where they must navigate through a series of hoops, ensuring both feet land perfectly within each circle. Ahead lies the hurdles, Four small obstacles set to test your jumping abilities. Next, the cone course awaits. It demands precision and grace as our competitors will weave their way through each cone. The last section is a dash towards the red mat, sprint back down the court, and leap over the final hurdle, <laughs> passing the baton, or rather your hat and a horse to your eagerly waiting teammate. The rules are simple. 
your horse must remain between your legs and your hat atop your head. If your horse or hat takes a tumble, you must retrieve it and resume from where they fell. Play fair, and if should any hurdle fall, quickly set it up before continuing. No, they're fine. You ready? On your mark, get set, go. This is uh, a lot more difficult than it looked. <laughs> that hurdle in the middle really, I'll tell you, that, that's going to give us some problems as we go down the. Oh, he is like a kangaroo over there. <laughs> We're kind of getting a little speed behind us for both team. This is uh, getting very competitive now. All right, do we have a winner? the uh, happy horse race and we'll get back to the ball game here in just a few moments we'll take another break and we'll let the teams come back out on the court and we'll be back right after this back as we are ready for the second quarter and we are underway here at the Panther Den. The second quarter of the fifth annual unified March Madness game. That one wouldn't go in the paint. Second opportunity again would not go. For Brittany Watson and the white team going to race down court. It's Jonathan Collier to the hole. Oh, man, that went almost. It was a laser beam at the top of the key. Brandon Holland gets another opportunity, another laser beam, and that one would not go. Free throw line shot wouldn't go. Another offensive rebound for the white team. Second shot, no. Another opportunity for the white team. Nash Broyles couldn't get it. Got his own rebound, though. Gets the third shot to go. Nash Broyles. All of a sudden, you look up, and the white team, after trailing early on in this ball game, well, guess what? They are now up 16 to 14. Scotty Miller, he's got it. He heaves one up, a little off the mark. Up top, a shot wouldn't go for Holland. He's going to get one of these eventually. Down court we go with Nash Broyles. Broyles stops, pops, Nash Broyles. Able to get the buckets. Got the roll. Did Broyles. Here they come down court. 
Brittany Watson makes the crowd come to their feet. Abby Brogdon has the crowd chanting her name. Lifts a running shot. No, another offensive rebound for the white team. Another opportunity for Abby Brogdon. It would not go. Brogdon's third shot. No, another opportunity for Brogdon. That one rimmed out. Nash Broyles couldn't get it to go. Collier, a couple of opportunities for Jonathan. And the red team will grab the rebound. With an assist from Becca Brooks. That one rims out of Brandon Holland. Jonathan Collier all alone. Jonathan Collier can't get it to go. Got his own rebound, though. A nifty dribbling. Collier, no. Going to kick it out to Abby Brogdon again. Brogdon urged by the crowd. There it is. Abby Brogdon with the bucket. Brittany Watson with it. She's going to give it up. Shot a little off the mark. Or Scotty Miller. He gets another opportunity, does Miller, and that one wouldn't go. Got another rebound, and it's Miller. Third chance for Scotty. A little off the mark. In the paint. Reeves, uh, check that. Uh, Brittany Watson could not get it to go. We're down to the four-minute mark here in the second quarter. And we will have a quick timeout as both teams will get a drink of water and they will uh, regroup. And we'll begin here just very shortly into the second half of the second quarter. Reminder, coming up at the half, it is the teacher-student basketball game. Crystal Lee will give it up. Davis Moffitt had an opportunity. Gets a second chance. He couldn't get it to go. And the red team comes out with it. <laughs> Jeremiah Hammond with the jumper. So it's Davis Moffitt. Moffitt, a little short on the first shot. We'll get one more opportunity. He's going to pass it up. Give it to Krista Lee, and Lee could not get it to go. After a uh, offensive first quarter, the second quarter, both teams have cooled off shooting. As the red team again has an opportunity, can't get it to go. Another red team offensive rebound. They have been crashing the boards tonight. That's Krista Irvin. She can get it to go. That one just rimmed out. The rim has not been kind. Jeremiah Hammond with an opportunity. It wouldn't go. It's a second opportunity. And he got it. 
Jeremiah Hammond gives the red team their 20th point. We are tied at 20 now as the white team. And Davis Moffitt, he pulls up, couldn't get it to go. Moffitt, another chance. No, got his own rebound. Third chance. That one just would not go. Fourth opportunity, back of the iron. Here comes the red team out with it quickly. Jeremiah Hammond. A little acrobatics coming down the floor, too. Davis Moffitt would not go. And the uh, white team, though, going to keep possession. Moffitt, a couple of chances here. Krista Lee with another opportunity, a little short. As we're under 60 seconds now. That one's up off the mark for the white team. The red team going to come out with it. Free throw line jumper would not fall for Jacob. Or Charles Bradley, he'll get the second opportunity. Bradley will. Here comes Jackie. Pittman's got another opportunity. That one would not go. And Jackie, another chance. Two seconds left, the red team at the buzzer. Going to stop and pop. Will Krista Irvin, no, got another rebound. The red team did, and is that going to do it? I think it is. That is going to do it for the first quarter, or first half, rather, of the Unify March Madness game. And look at that. We've got a, a good one going, 24-20, red team on top. As uh, I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Patrick Fates. He's going to put his... Microphone on. He'll be able to hear himself, and he can talk to me. There, there you are. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Oh, oh, there, we go. there we go. There we go. Perfect. There, hey, th there you are on screen. We'll, hey, George. We'll, we'll, we'll get you in in focus there. Uh, it's good to have you up here in the broadcast booth. You've been down yeah. at the ESPN table. I know a lot of people have been. Um, I mean. Callie and Taylor last year were asking me yeah. questions from down there, so yeah. I'm happy to be up here this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Your entire high school career, and I know that you've been involved with this game for a long yeah. time, you have had an interest in broadcasting. Oh, yeah. What has spurred that interest? Why are you so um, interested in broadcasting? Um, just watching these other people, like from all these games, do it. They've um, just been such an inspiration to me, and yeah. I, wanna, I hope to follow their path one day. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question before we get to the student teacher basketball game, yeah. and you can help me commentate it because you'll know some of these kids down here. Yeah. Uh, if you could call or broadcast one sport, what would it be? Uh, baseball. I'm baseball, a, yeah. all right. I'm a, huge, I'm a huge Braves fan, so. Okay, so yeah. you would love to broadcast yeah. a Braves game. Yeah, I'd love to broadcast a Braves all game. All right, we're going to head down to some of your cohorts, and they're going to tell us what's fixing we're to happen. All right. We're the of a Unify Project team in our, project, in our leadership class. For a while now, we have been planning this amazing and entertaining halftime show for this lovely community we have here tonight. I bet you're wondering what this halftime show may be about. So we wanted to recognize some of our faculty and students at the high school and in our community. So what's a better way to do that than have a little friendly competition? So let's welcome your faculty flyers. Say they look a little ragtag, Patrick. I don't oh, yeah. know. I don't know about the, the faculty flyers. Oh, yeah. I don't know. 
And some boo birds too that are yep. raining now let's down. Let's welcome your student stars. Here come the student stars. We've got the student stars and the oh, yeah. faculty flyers that are going to do battle here in the first ever teacher student basketball game. Have you seen these uh, these folks practicing out here? Have they been getting ready for so this? They, <laughs> I haven't seen this game specifically reversed, but I've came out here every Tuesday, Thursday. They've yeah. been uh, these kids have been doing an awesome job. Yeah. So that's well, been great. Yeah, see that every Tuesday. Well, we're going to. Your team in aerobics. Aerobics. No, no basketball. Just aerobics. Are they going to do aerobics out just here? Just aerobics. All right. You can only do aerobics. To warm this, up. this is going to be interesting right here. Come on, Mr. Greenwood, show them how to do some aerobics. <laughs> so they're getting, they're getting ready. They're really lean into it. <laughs> I do not recognize one of these teachers. Now, is it true, the Patrick? The shirts are a little too much. Is, is it true or that the uh, faculty is so I'm concerned sure. about their health that they've got an ambulance waiting out here to take some of them off? Is, is that true? That's, that's I, what somebody told me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Trash <laughs> talk to start the game. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like we're ready to go. All right. And the, uh, the faculty and the teachers, the faculty flyers. Somehow the white team found a basketball. I guess they're still officially warming up. And we'll get this one underway very shortly. Oh, I see guy, some. Uh, is that a science teacher? Is that a scientist? I see some uh, some veterans of the basketball floor here. Yeah. Uh, so this may be pretty competitive. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of looking forward to this. I see a uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob Gibson's out there for the students. Uh, Attic Sutton, he's also out there for the students. Both yep. played on the basketball team. Yep. Good. All right. I think they're officially ready now for the student teachers basketball game. They're going to play two four-minute quarters. All right. And... Uh, We'll see who's going to win here. Do you have any predictions? Um, I predict that the uh, – I'm going to go for the white team on this one. Right. Uh, yeah. So you think that the teachers or is teachers. it the I – think, I think – Students or the teachers, okay. I think the, I think the teachers, yeah. All right. All right. So Jared Greenwood actually jumped center for the teachers. See if I can. They don't have numbers. Let me see if I can. It looks like Brooke Watson out there. Yeah, Brooke Watson. She's going to swing it over to Jerry Greenwood. The three. Whoa! Oh, man, that That's was okay. close. Miss Vitaly actually almost made that. So a half court shot oh, wow. will not go for the students. They'll get the own rebound and kick it out. It's a three from the corner. That one wouldn't go. Jerry Greenwood wearing the ball cap backwards. He's going to dish. The corner three wouldn't go. Well, the students have an opportunity. Oh, oh, what? First whistle and a traveling oh. violation up top. Nobody has scored one minute in the students' teachers' basketball game. So it's Brooke Watson He's going to kick it over. He'll feed it underneath. Greenwood, tell you what, that was, that was a move underneath, but she could, he couldn't get it to go. I would say that both teams are cold from the floor. Yeah. Air ball from the corner. Oh, yeah. A rebound for the students. And the baseline jumper is up and good. So then now it's the, uh, I think the score, our scoreboard's wrong. There we go. The 
Jared Greenwood, he saw a crash at the boards. The students got the first bucket. Now to two minutes left. Brooke Watson, high off the glass. Attic Sutton has it. For the students. It's a deep three. Oh, oh man, that one almost went in. Oh, well, we've got a whistle. Looks like some subs coming in for the first time. We've got a whole new yeah. team coming in for the students. An all girls team. Mr. Moffitt out. He's going to bring it up, kick it over to a guy who's wearing a fro in the corner. I don't know who that guy is. I don't know is. who he is either. I don't know. And then a turnover. Mr. Moffitt turns it over. Some a little bit of agility. Yeah. That was a play there, a little give and go. Trying to get a good look at who that is with the, no. uh, the fro in the corner. I can't tell. <laughs> Mr. Moffitt gets the bucket. Gets the first yeah. points for the teachers. Oh, they're going to sub back in. Well, the teachers, Brooke Watson, going to come back in. <laughs> We're down to 38 seconds left. It's a running clock, by the way, if you didn't know. Patrick. Okay. Yeah, it's a running clock. Oh, a fast break. Oh, going the wrong way. Fast break the wrong way. <laughs> now it's an actual fast break. Off the block. Yeah. Oh, the teachers have tied it up yeah. now at four apiece. High off the glass, that one would go. White team, students grab the rebound. They do it. Oh, they stop the clock with two seconds left. That'll do it. Bonk. Are they going to keep it going? All right. Counted it down on the PA. Now they're going to blow the whistle with Jay and Josh, the official officials. And we are one half of action into the student teachers basketball game and Patrick what else would you expect we are tied at four piece oh yeah I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't expect much more <laughs> so they're going to figure out exactly what they want to do here in the second half both okay. uh, both the students and the teachers and uh, I don't think there's officially a coach for either team they're just kind of making their way and uh, figuring it out as they go right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this, Patrick. Yeah. What is what is one thing that has stuck out this uh, semester as uh, you have studied broadcasting? Um, let me tell you, I have taken a lot of notes. Mr. Taylor's put me to work yep. taking a lot of notes. Um, my, I didn't know that, um, and it's it's been so much fun. Um, I didn't know that th that you like have to travel that much for like broadcasting and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of stuck out to me. Um, the other thing I watched was um, like setups for like uh, games and stuff. I don't like I didn't know how they did that. So I watched like I think it was a a, con a control room video um, about that. And yeah, so I've, I've been hard at work this semester. I finished it, but uh, awesome. Well, I'm yeah. glad that you've learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot behind the scenes yeah. that I tell folks about when it comes to broadcasting. Oh, yeah. it, it looks seamless and it looks easy, but uh, there's a lot. The fake there by Jared Greenwood. <laughs> there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that nobody ever sees. And no. It makes it so it looks yeah. so easy and it flows real well. There's a lot of work that goes into it from behind. Jesse Pinkston. Hey. With the bucket. And guess what? The teachers have taken their first wow. lead. Attic Sutton brings it down as he's going to dish. Now trailing by a bucket, and they'll get it back. Roll the students, and it'll be tied at six. With two minutes, 45 seconds left. Greenwood, fade away. Jared Greenwood gives the teachers the lead once again. 
tries to bank it home. That one wouldn't go. Now we've got a whistle. It's like another line change for the students. I'll bring in some new players off the bench. Well, it's Mr. Moffitt and the teachers that will have it. Brooke Watson, she's open, a three off the mark. Down court, through the hands, out of bounds, back to the teachers. That clock is a roll, and we're down to almost two minutes left. Greenwood gives it up into the corner. The Afro man, so we're going to call him with the uh, sunglasses, he gave it up. Shot wouldn't go. Down court, what a move! Oh! I think she's done that before a yeah. few times. <laughs> I don't think she's just a regular student. She's got practice. No. It's Attic Sutton. Attic. Oh! Now the student's up 10 8. Mr. Moffitt, he almost dished it across the court. Now a fadeaway. <laughs> Seventy seconds left. This one's coming down to the wire, oh, yeah. Patrick. Oh yeah. Baseline, it wouldn't go. Still don't know who that. Uh, you who that guy is over yeah, the stage. I've got some binoculars, and I cannot figure out who it is. I cannot. No. He is uh, well disguised. Well disguised. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a deep three. Oh. Whoa. At the top of the backboard. Here we go. Down to 40 seconds to Mr. Moffitt. And he's going to give it up. For the win, possibly. That one's off. The question is, are they going to go to overtime? That one would not go. A point blank layup. Down to 23 seconds. Out of bounds. Clock continues to tick, though. We're down to 15 seconds. Comes Attic Sutton. What does Sutton want to do? We're down to five seconds. That one is swatted away. Whoa. Stops the clock with 1.9 seconds. They're going to have some type of a shootout or something, I would think. They're going to have to. For the win. Oh. oh. So they have stopped the clock. Are they just going to keep the clock at 1.9 until somebody scores? It looks like they will. <laughs> A lot of half court shots being attempted here. You just need to lay up to win it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Jared Greenwood. Two on one break. Gives it up to Moffitt. Hey! That's it. Yeah. That's it. The teachers will beat the students. 12 to 10. That's your final. Oh, yeah. That was fun. That was so really much fun. Was. Seeing uh, all the students and the teachers go at it. Yep. Well, Patrick, it has been a pleasure it's joining me pleasure. here at the half. And now uh, you're going to head back down to the yep. scores table and enjoy the second yeah. half. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank George. you. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and tip off the third quarter here in just a moment. game and we wanted to thank everyone who participated and thank you all for watching. Now since the winners are the teachers they deserve a little prize. I would say so. They played their hearts out so I present to the 2024 Unified Halftime Show winners the teachers a hand-painted trophy decorated by Miss Marley Barnes. 
Now, let's get back to the real game and watch those basketball stars have the night of their lives. So they gave a uh, trophy, basketball. It is time for the third quarter. To the uh, teachers there as uh, we came back. We were trying to get our cameras focused on what they were actually given to the, the teachers. So the third quarter about to begin in the Unify March Madness game. Eight minutes up on the scoreboard. And we will get to third quarter action. Coming up at the end of this quarter, we're going to have the uh, men's volleyball team, the club team that uh, just formed this year, introduced. They're going to do a uh, quick exhibition after this third quarter into the fourth quarter. The red team has a 24 to 20 lead. Let's begin this third quarter. Red team takes that four point lead into the half. Kyle Brackett able to get that one to go. For the red team, and Irvin brings it down court. Irvin got a stop underneath the basket. Get position, lift a shot, and get it to go. The red team takes a six-point lead now. Natalie Henry, second opportunity. She couldn't get it. Going to get a third chance in the paint. Off the glass and good. Natalie Henry cuts into that red team lead and makes it a 26-24. Red team advantage. Bradley with a shot. That one wouldn't go for Charles. Another opportunity for the red team. It's Caitlin Reeves, and it wouldn't go. High off the glass. Another opportunity for the white team. Family Henry, another chance at it, and Another offensive rebound for the white team. It was the red team in the first quarter. They got a bunch of offensive rebounds. It's the white team here in the third quarter. That one's up and good. Dylan Ford able to tie this game at 26. Bradley. First shot wouldn't go. Gets another chance. Got his own rebound again. Third opportunity. Just a little bit off. Irvin again underneath. Irvin takes your time. Shot up and good. So the white team now trailing 28-26. Ford now with a chance, and he hits. We'll get a break here in a second as the time ticks down to four minutes. 
Irvin, down court, stops. Posts up. Gets position now. Can't get the bucket. Red team able to grab a rebound. It's Reeves underneath. Caitlin Reeves just a little bit off. But guess what? She got her own rebound. She goes up, and that wouldn't go. And we've got a whistle. And that is going to do it for the first four minutes of the third quarter. So, what do you know? Just like the student-teacher game, we are tied 28 apiece. Back to action. Had some subs coming in for both teams between quarters or between the uh, first four minutes and the next four minutes. Nifty move. Bobby Zebedin. Zebedin comes out with it. See if he can get back-to-back -back buckets. He's going to give it up to his teammate Jenkins. Jenkins shot wouldn't go. Another offensive rebound for the red team. Now Matthew Jenkins, what could he do with it? He's going to keep it away first. Now drive in. Jenkins, shot, got it. In the paint, it's Mashburn. Off the glass. So Matthew Jenkins with the red teams. We're down to two minutes, 25 seconds left. Evident. Tell you what, he can shoot. It's Mashburn, Angela Mashburn, able to get the bucket, and again, Zebedin. Bobby Zebedin dominating underneath. <laughs> Got a turnover at midcourt. Jenkins, no, another offensive rebound for the red team. Jenkins, second shot up, and he gets the roll, does Matthew Jenkins. And a steal underneath. Zabinen comes out with it. Nice pass up court. Couldn't convert. Hammond. Jeremiah Hammond dribbles around. Gives it to Zabinen. He's going to attempt from beyond the arc. That one wouldn't go. And here comes the white team with 40 seconds left. Mashburn gets position in the paint, and Elizabeth Mashburn, count it. Zebedin dishes, baseline jumper, God, got it. Jeremiah Hammond having a night.
So we're down to 2.2 seconds. They're going to stop the clock so the horn doesn't sound. And Zevedin will dish it over to Hammond. He's going to take it back out beyond the arc. Does he want to attempt one from downtown? He does. He wouldn't go. Zevedin with the rebound. He lifts the shot. No. And the white team will have one more chance before we head to the fourth quarter. Angela Mashburn at the buzzer. We'll make it a 40-36 red team lead. We're going to have the uh, men's volleyball team, the club team, that just formed this year, come out and we'll have an exhibition. And they're going to get this net set up very, very quickly. In the meantime, we're going to take a uh, quick break here. We'll come back right after this. Or maybe we won't. We'll keep it here as we will have a exhibition volleyball match. The uh, club team that just formed a couple of months ago. Of our first ever men's club volleyball team in school history. Volleyball. <laughs> volleyball is one of the fastest growing sports, not only in our state, but also around the globe. It is with immense pride that we watch our very own athletes take part in this dynamic game. Coach Becca, Coach Cindy, and both the women's and men's team have been working tirelessly on and off the court to promote men's volleyball and advocate for the sanctioning here in North Carolina. As we witness their hard work in action today, let's not forget to mark our calendars this Saturday, March 23rd, when our FHS men's club volleyball team will com be competing against IC Imagine and TC Robertson. Action starts at 1 p.m. right here in the Panther Den. Make sure to come out and support our athletes as they represent our school with pride and pr passion. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause for Coach Becca, Coach Cindy, and the FHS men's club volleyball team. Go Panthers! All right, so they're going to come out and they're going to put on an exhibition here of men's volleyball. Again, it is not a sanctioned sport just yet in North Carolina. The NCHSA is exploring that. And in the next couple of years, we'll have an actual men's volleyball team that will be sanctioned with the High School Athletic Association, meaning there will be seasons and playoffs and all that jazz in a couple of years, and I'm assuming it would be in the uh, the springtime since the women's volleyball is in the fall, beginning of school into uh, the fall, begins in October. put on a, a show here for a couple of minutes and then we'll get back to the unified basketball game. It is the first round of the NCAA tournament. I know that North Carolina won earlier today and dominating fashion over Wagner 90 to 62 other higher seeds won including Arizona and Illinois 
Uh, South Carolina lost. They're a lower seed today. Lost to Oregon, an 11 seed. And looks like the higher seeds prevailed in the other games so far. Dayton won and Creighton won. Duquesne did beat BYU. Texas, Colorado State just underway. A lot tonight, too. we got Kentucky and Gonzaga, Tennessee, uh, NC State will be playing. Of course, they won the ACC tournament, made their way into the NCAA tournament. They were most likely not going to make it unless they had won the tournament. Kansas also playing tonight. So a lot of basketball for you later on tonight. Unfortunately, I don't have a roster for the uh, volleyball team. I could give you some names, but uh, they've got some snazzy looking uniforms. I'll tell you that. Well, as the exhibition continues, I will tell you that uh, we'll have uh, possibly, if Mother Nature coordinates herself and doesn't bring rain, <laughs> like it's forecast to do tomorrow, I'll have some baseball for you here on the network. Franklin is supposed to play Pisgah tomorrow night. They have moved that game from a 7 o'clock start to 4.30 start in hopes that the rain will come in later. They flip-flop in the JV and the varsity. But uh, looking at the forecast right now, it's 100% chance of rain at 4 o'clock. So uh, we will cross the fingers at our toes that they'll be able to get that one in. But it doesn't look good right now. But they're trying to, uh, to get the baseball game in. If it does happen, then we'll have it here on the network, YouTube and Facebook. So make sure to join us tomorrow afternoon as I'll be joined with Ryan Haley for some Mountain 7 Conference baseball action. And next week we've got... Another action-packed week if the weather does hold. It looks like the middle part of the week, another rainstorm going to be moving in. But I don't think it'll rain for three straight days, like they're saying. It'll just be spotty on a few days. But uh, on Wednesday of next week, Franklin Baseball will be hosting North Henderson. And we'll have that one on the network on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Franklin Softball will be hosting Madison in a non-conference game. The softball game slated for North Henderson tomorrow night has been moved to a 4 o'clock start from a 5 o'clock start. And I checked the forecast in Hendersonville about uh, three hours ago when I got the word that they had moved the games. And in Hendersonville, the uh, forecast is a 100% chance of rain tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. So uh, it doesn't look good. Of course, forecast changes all the time. So. Maybe the stars will align and they can get those ball games in. Just need a window of about two hours, and that's what they're hoping for tomorrow. But uh, we will see. Of course, if you haven't, go ahead and like our Facebook page and follow our YouTube and our Instagram account, and we'll keep you up to date with cancellations, postponements, with the games tomorrow. All right, I think they're going to have the last serve here in this exhibition men's volleyball game. But Jacob Gilman did the honors. They'll collapse the, uh, the net. And then we'll get back to the ball game. All right, Philip, we'll take a quick break here. We'll come back and we'll get the fourth quarter of the basketball game underway right after this.
bien mucho más. They have removed the volleyball net and the record time. And uh, they'll get the uh, fourth and final quarter of the Unify March Madness basketball game underway with the red team up by four at 40 to 36. At the conclusion, we'll have some awards handed out. Then we'll have autographs for the teams to sign. Uh, in the end zones, uh, all the fans in the stands can go down and get their autographs of the players. And then we'll sign off here. They were hoping that the game by my uh, watch here would be already over by now, but it's 7.30 and we've still got another quarter of basketball. Red team with the first opportunity at the bucket. Irvin couldn't get it. Offensive rebound, second shot. No, and the white team now will attack. Crystal Lee getting position. Lee heaves it a little short. And Sammy Kama, who comes out with it, then he gets his pocket picked. Collier harassing D. Kama with issues. He's going to pick it up in the paint. Sammy Kama kicks it. Irvin lifts the jumper and wouldn't go. Coming down with it is Jonathan Collier. He's going to race out. Collier off the glass. Jonathan Collier makes it a two-point game. It's Scotty Miller. A little short. Got his own rebound, though. And Miller can get it to go. And guess who comes out? It's Jonathan Collier. You're going to race out with it. Collier wouldn't go. And it's Sammy Kama. Collision at midcourt. There's got to be a foul. There we go. All right, the first foul was sold in the ball game. Got to have some shots here. Shouldn't we? We should have some free throw shots. Yeah, it looks like we will. Scotty Miller will be at the line for the red team. Try to tie it. First one, no. Irvin, her shot, it wouldn't go, and Jonathan Collier now brings it up. High off the mark. Collier with the rebound. Another opportunity in the paint. No, and guess who? It's Kama coming out with it. Kama lost control. It's Collier. Collier. He got it. So they're going to stop it with three minutes now left halfway through this fourth quarter. They shortened it to just six minutes. Going to stop it for a quick breather. We'll get some new players into the ball game. And the 
guys and gals that were out on the floor will get a good drink of water. Brittany Watson. Emma, check that, Brandon Holloway, uh, Holland. And Holland able to get the bucket. And the red team up 42-40. Nash Broyles. Watson. Brittany Watson able to get it in the paint. Got the roll that time. The iron has been kind here in this uh, fourth quarter, really for both teams. Jackie, Jackie Pittman. First opportunity, couldn't get it to go. Gets another chance and got that one to go. Jackie Pittman, a standing ovation. We're tied at 44 fans. It's coming down to the wire. Brandon Holland, open. Couldn't get it to go. Got his own rebound. Gets a baseline jumper up. Wouldn't go. Another red team rebound. It's Watson. Watson in and out. Another red team rebound. It's Holland. Holland can't get the roll. We're under a minute left. Brittany Watson able to get the bucket. Abby Brogdon brings the crowd to their feet. Down to 28 seconds. Again, it is Watson trying to get a bucket. Holland tied at 46, coming down to the wire. 20 seconds left. In and out with a shot for Brandon Holland. Another opportunity for Holland. Hit the back of the iron. Red team with another rebound. Down to 10 seconds. Here we go to win the game. Watson. There it is. But Brittany Watson hits the bucket for the red team at the buzzer to win the game. Now we're going to head into the post-game award ceremony. Uh, they're going to hand out some fantastic awards. They do this each and every year. As they get things situated here, you see all the stuff they're going to be handing out very, very shortly to the players. And each team now going to line up on the baseline, near the baseline on each side.
First, we would like to give a round of applause to our red and white team coaches. We thank each one of you for your time in preparing these kids since December until now. Coach Becca, your dedication and countless hours invested in these athletes in this event are truly invaluable. We are immensely grateful for your effort and for making this all possible. Next up, we want to thank Chick-fil-A of Franklin, Franklin Panther Sports Network, the seniors who participated in this event, the student leadership team, the administration, faculty, staff, and sponsors. We want to thank everyone who showed up in the gym and on our live stream tonight, the National Honor Society, and finally, we would like to thank a local community member that has been graciously sponsoring our unified t-shirts each year as well as Sports Zone working with us and providing the amazing shirts for this event. Okay. Now on to the awards. First up, we're going to start with our white team. Number one, Abby Brogdon. Number two, Jonathan Collier. Number three, Elizabeth Mashburn. Number 11, Jackie Pittman. Number 13, Dylan Ford. Okay. Number 22, Angela Mashburn. Number 23, Natalie Henry. Number 24, Krista Lee. Number 30, Davis Moffitt. Number 31, Joel Rogers. Number 32, Jacob Gilman. Number 33, Kyle Brackett. And number 34, Nash Broyles. Okay, now on to our Red Team Awards. We're gonna start with number one, Brandon Holland. Number two, Emma Autry. Number three, Krista Irvin. <laughs> Number 11, Erica Messer. Number 13, Joe Nolan.
Number 15, Jeremiah Hammond. <laughs> Number 22, Caitlin Reeves. Number 24, Brittany Watson. Number 30, Bobby Zabenden. Number 32, Charles Bradley. Number 34, Matthew Jenkins. Number 55, Sammy Kama. And finally, number 45, Scott Miller. This concludes our Unify March Madness event. Please join us for autographs, and we would like to thank everyone who showed up in the gym and on our live stream. Your, your support means the world to us. All right, that's going to wrap things up for tonight's broadcast. Appreciate you joining us for the fifth annual Unify March Madness basketball game. For all involved, I'm George Young. So long, everybody.